Hi viewers, welcome back to the Jenkins tutorial part 5. In this tutorial, I am going to show about the Jenkins user administration part. So, for that, you need to click on manage Jenkins and configure global security. Then click on enable security. So, then it will give the access controls and as well as the authorization and security reliance types. So here, uh, if you go for the security realm, it said it will have the four option by default. They'll get to servlet container, Jenkins own user database, and a lab, then Unix user groups database. So here, delegate to servlet container. That means that the Tomcat users can able to access the uh, Jenkins. Or else, if you configure the Jenkins own da user database, means Jenkins does not have any database, but it is having a config.xml file. So it will store the all configurations of it. So if you choose this option, automatically you can able to create the user for the Jenkins and it will encrypt the passwords and store it in the config.xml. And if you go for the LDAP, so if you are uh, you familiar with the Linux, you know, I think you will be aware of LDAP authentication mechanism. In Windows, you will have the Active Directory authentication mechanisms. So if you want to use LDAP, you can go for LDAP relay. Or else, if you want to use without LDAP but Unix OS, then you can choose the Unix user group or database. So that means whoever having the Unix account, login account, then they can able to login into the Jenkins. So now I am going. I do not configure any LDAP server. Uh, if you want to go for a Active Directory service, then you need to install the. Active Directory Service Plugin. Then only you can able to view that ID authentication here. Uh, now I am going with the Unix User Group Database because I haven't configured a lab here. So in Unix User uh, Group Database, you can uh, configure different authorization strategies. Like any one can do anything. That means whoever having the Unix account, login account, they can do anything in Jenkins, like administrative part and everything. If you choose for the legacy mode, you can able to create an admin role and as well as user mode. So all user will have the read permissions only and admin have the whole permissions. And then logged in user can do anything. That means whoever logged into Jenkins, they can do all those things. And matrix based security. Matrix based means we can give the specific user to a specific permission. So for example, if I am created a XY jewel user into the Unix group in Unix operating system. So if I configure his name in matrix based operating system, then I can able to be add that user right now from Unix. So once if you added that user to here, he can able we can able to give the specific privileges to him. So if we if you want to make him as an administrator, they can then you can able to give admin privileges. Or if you want to give gen only job reading permit read permissions, then you can allocate read permissions here like that. So in the similar way, you can give the specific privileges to him for the particular person. A particular user oh, or as well as here you can project based matrix authorization step. so this is the better practice in Jenkins to every it all the time because we can configure the users for the particular job or particular uh, project and particular with particular permissions for example here I am going to add with the root user so Jenkins uh, sorry it's a root is the Unix admin account right so I am going to add this root so now root doesn't have any privileges so we haven't assigned any privileges to root user but I am going to make this root user as an administrator of Jenkins now I am saving the settings now automatically it is asking for the login whenever you go for the Jenkins uh, Jenkins if you access Jenkins URL, then automatically it will ask for the username. So here I am giving the root and then as well as the Unix login password. So I am clicking login. On. So everything you can do means every permission, administrator, for admin privileges are there. So you can do everything in Jenkins. In the similar way, I am going to, for example, I want to create another user. So I am going to manage Jenkins again. 
I want to configure global generality. So here I am going to add one more user, Chandu. So I added him into the Jenkins user database. Then I am clicking. I am selecting the read permission for him. So I am just giving read permission. So that means we can able to read the Jenkins um, jobs and all. There is nothing else to do. So I am doing it. So it is asking for the login. I am giving the username Chandu and as well as his password. Yes, something went wrong. Sorry. Actually, we need to access only Jenkins. I am removing this context path. So now we can able to see build history, people, my views, and all. So he can able to see only the uh, minimal things. So he cannot able to do anything here with this user. If I want, if I assign the another uh, like read permission, so job read privileges, then he can able to read the job. So here I am going to assign one more role about the jobs. So here job read permissions I am assigning. Then now here I am refreshing the user. So now he got the job list. Okay. Now he can able to do a read mode because he cannot able to build this job or cancel this job. He cannot able to schedule. So just a read permissions I have assigned. So if you assign the uh, build and schedules and all permissions, then he can able to do some special operations. Like I am assuming a That is for anonymous right? So we went to first. Here I am going with now I have given reason. Now he will get the build now option. Okay. That means we have given a build privileges to particular user that means Chandu got the permit so you can able to build the you can able to trigger the job you can execute the build option if you want to revoke the user privileges you can just uncheck the uncheck this operations and as well as if you want to provide any other specific uh, privileges you can just check it it will be and then this is previous uh, this is nothing but a prevent cross site scripting that means there are some hacker guys, bad guys are there in internet so if you connect if they connected if they are able to connect it to your proxy and all they can able to make that crosswords cracking because config.xml just having a encrypted so if they decrypt it now then you will your password will be breaking so for that they if you want to prevent cross site scripting then you can use this option so in the security point of it will be used so this is the Jenkins user administrator pod. Then in next tutorial, I am going to show uh, one more complex tutorials. Thank you, guys. Bye.